Welcome to another episode of Utmost Outdoors. In this video, I want to see how much gold is really worth and how you can sell it. So if you go to Alburn Coins Limited, which is a gold buyer located here in Calgary, and you show up with a little vial of gold like this, they will not pay you any money for it. You first need to melt it into a button like one of these two little guys right here. Now, I tried to melt a button and I, I did end up melting two of them, but the entire video was like 15 minutes of me sitting here with a torch, just kind of wasting time. So through those first two attempts, I did learn something. And so I will cut some of that in to show you what doesn't work because that's sometimes the best way to learn. And then I'll show you what I've settled on that really does work. So originally, I had this tuna can here as my catch tray, just in case a crucible were to crack. And I decided to put that on top of a camp stove so that heat was coming in from the underside and it would kind of be heating the bottom of the crucible, making a little oven in there. And then I decided I would use this Burns-O-Matic TS-1500, one of the smallest little blowtorches you can get, and it just wasn't getting anywhere. I managed to glaze the crucible, but the gold was not melting. Next, I managed to go over to a friend's house since the Home Depot was closing early and pick up his Burnzomatic TS-8000. This is one of the largest blow torches you can buy and it's definitely the blow torch that's gonna do it if you can do it with a blow torch. A lot of people that I see do this online, they'll have an oxyacetylene torch with a really hot flame and getting a blowtorch like this to work can be very challenging. So even with the little dish setup I had on top of the camp stove, I had to use map gas instead of regular propane in order to get this to work. And even with map gas, this torch just barely did the trick. So I'm gonna show you what I did to modify this torch to make this work really, really efficiently and, and that's how I'm gonna be melting any gold going forwards. It's what I would recommend to anyone. So the first step is you're gonna need a crucible. I went on Amazon and I bought two, well, three crucibles. This single crucible was $12 shipped to my door here in Canada. And I figured, well, it has a few reviews. People say it's all right. It's a good ceramic crucible, I'll buy that one. I also found a little bit cheaper for only $10, a two pack of crucibles, which nicely fit inside of each other. And those crucibles I would definitely recommend because it turns out they're exactly the same. You just get more crucible for less money. So I'll put a link down below for this double set so you don't end up wasting money just getting a little single like this. Borax is what I'm using over here. So the borax powder basically melts into a sort of a glass coating. And this is where I melted before. You can see it's sort of gone dark. That's from picking up some of the impurities from the gold, like maybe some black sands or something that was in there. I think that the, the number one purpose of that borax is when you have all your fine flour gold in there, this torch is blasting in there like quite powerfully. So the borax is able to melt and create like a, a glazing, a protective coating around that gold that keeps it from blowing away. And then it's able to melt without blowing everything away. My first attempt at a button, I'm just gonna show you these buttons over here. So attempt number one, I took 6.17 grams of gold that I found on my final trip of the 2021 season. And I melted it into a button. This is that button right here, I sanded the surface because I wanted to make sure that when they put it through their little scanner it, it wasn't contaminated but it turns out they put a little divot in the top anyways for the scanner to see what's going on. I'll explain that how that whole process works and what they pay for this at the end of the video. But I started with 6.17 grams and I wound up with only 5.61. So I lost uh, 9% essentially. I wound up with 90.9% .9 remaining of that gold. And I was thinking, well, maybe it's because it's purifying it and a bunch of impurities got taken away in the borax. But when I looked back at that video, I did notice that the, the borax had kind of melted and expanded and maybe actually deposited some little gold flakes out of the crucible. 
So I think that's how I actually lost my gold. I then did it again with gold from a different river and I put in five grams of gold exactly. And after the button was formed, I wound up with 4.88 grams or 97.6% of my original weight. That seems like a lot better. So today I'm going to do a third melt showing you exactly how I would do this and just how easy it can be with nothing but a propane torch running propane. I'll show you the trick to that. And I really want to see if I can get that 97% capture rate again to confirm that the first was, it wasn't less pure gold. It was actually a mistake with the, the torch splashing some of that gold out of the crucible. So hopefully we'll get that 97% capture rate. So what I have here is the, the crucible I'm going to be using. It already has some borax in it. If you're using a brand new fresh crucible like this, heat it up with your blowtorch first, sprinkle a little bit of borax into the hot crucible just so that it glazes that surface. And then you can go ahead and pour your gold in, sprinkle a little bit of borax on top, and then you bring the flame in slowly from a distance so that you don't blow your gold away. Make sure <laughs> that you let that borax melt first before you really get in there with the torch at full speed. It also makes sense, uh, you should probably heat this up a little bit slowly to prevent potentially cracking your crucible. And I am using this little tuna dish from before just in case the crucible cracks so that I can capture any gold instead of having it just go all over the ground here. From this beautiful ounce of flour gold, I'm gonna weigh out an additional five grams on the scale here. And that is what we are going to be melting today. It really does look like a lot when it's all spread out like this. Just beautiful stuff. I prefer my gold in powder form, but it's important to know what's it actually worth? <laughs> How can you buy gas and groceries with this stuff? And to do that, it seems like melting it into a button is how you do it from an official gold buyer. Can't get any more perfect than that. So I'm going to pour this into my crucible. And I want it to be as much as I can all together down at the bottom there. There we have the gold, just a little pinch of borax, again, just to make sure that that holds all the gold together in there and doesn't let it blow away on me. This is just the torch doing the best it's can, it can. So that was just a quick attempt to see if the torch by itself could do it, even with this little ring on the front. And trust me, I've tried it without it as well. And you need to use map gas and even then it barely worked. Here's the real trick. If you take your air compressor, I just have a tiny little air compressor in the background there, nothing special about it. And a regular El Cheapo tip, you could use whatever one you want. And all you do, is in the side of the torch, you set this in here, just notch it in like that, kind of holds itself in place, and just really gently, just barely crack open the air. You can sort of, if you put enough air in, you'll blow the flame completely out. But what this does is it actually kind of supercharges the torch and makes a really, really hot flame. So before this cools right down, and just so you can see, because of that little bit of borax in there, this gold is now solid to the touch. Like it's all one hunk. So you don't have to worry about it blowing away. And the stuff that's way out in the edges here, that might actually be a little bit of lost gold. But if you keep reusing the same crucible, you should be okay. My goal is to get this to melt. And when it melts, it actually pulls itself all together into a nice little puddle.
approximately 617 bucks. Okay, so that would be 617 for that 10.42 grams. 22, 22 carat. And then obviously you said if it was 24 carat, that would be 60. I mean, today yeah. we're offering $65.66 66 a gram for today. Moment of truth. Yeah, cooled down nice and quick. So there's our little nugget. Depending on the temperature of that uh, little piece of gold, when you pour it, it'll pour more rounded or more of a splatter shape. Here it's a little bit more, I don't know, it's just chunky. Depending on the temperature when you pour it, you'll see parts look more gold, part look, parts look a little bit uh, colored. That's just a really thin layer of the borax on the surface. And uh, I just took some, some ultra fine sandpaper to, to get rid of that. But these worked out to 22 carats. And for 22 carat gold, they were gonna pay me, I had a total of, uh, let's see what they had written here. I had, there it is, 10.42 grams combined, so these 10.42 grams, they were gonna pay me $617 in cash, Canadian money, for that gold. He said that at the spot price of that day, which was yesterday, they would pay $65 and some change, $65 and change for 24 karat gold. And uh, I'll have to write it in afterwards because I can't do the math here but for the 10.42 grams it was 617 bucks he was going to give me for these two right here so this is also going to be that same 22 karat gold because it's the same gold that I used for my first one except that on the first one I lost 10 percent due to impurities and this time I lost uh, a lower percentage because I didn't lose as much into the crucible there's still stuff for me to learn. Leave in the comments below whether I should uh, heat the crucible first and then pour in the gold or if having the gold in like I'm doing it is okay. But 4.9, well, it's gone up to 4.91 now. But this is 98% of what I started with. <laughs> That's really cool because that means that 22 karat gold out of these rivers after melting it down, you only lose 2% of what you found, which means this gold is over 90% pure. I will do some math off camera here and I'll, I'll write that over, over here. This is the, uh, the actual purity of your gold, um, but over 90% pure. And then when you take it into Alburn coins, they put a little divot in the top to see what the exact purity is. Again, I got 22 carat for both of the buttons that I brought in. And this button number one is the same as this button right here. So we can figure out exactly how much gold you actually get from the river, what period it is, and how much money you get in your pocket for that. Anyways, I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, it's always fun looking at the gold, especially when you look at it next to how it came au naturel. That is some beautiful looking stuff right there. Yeah, hope, hope you learned something and thanks for watching.